When it comes to video game characters period, few are as recognisable as Street Fighter's red gi wearing warrior Ken Masters. This blonde haired hero, other than Ryu himself, is the only combatant who has been playable within every single entry in the Street Fighter series. Prior to Street Fighter 6's release, thanks to leaks, rumours would begin to circulate that Ken would appear in a bad place during the game. The artwork revealed an aged, grizzled, stoic looking warrior rather than the stylish, easy going athlete that we have all become accustomed to. The eventual game's release would later confirm that not only were things bad for this athlete, but things had gotten so terrible that he was now a wanted criminal. So join me today as we not only discuss this most recent harrowing chapter in the life of Mr Masters, but take an epic trip back through time to look at each and every inch of his storied career. With all of that said, hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the rise and fall of the legendary Ken Masters. Yeah. But first, a word from our sponsor. Are you tired of battling sweltering heat waves and sticky summer days? Say goodbye to this discomfort and hello to the Jizu Life Handheld Fan Pro 1S. This compact and powerful companion is here to keep you cool, calm and collected no matter where you go. With its new peak of powerful windfalls, the wind speed reaches 9 meters per second, accelerating the cooling rate threefold. Experience an exhilarating breeze at your fingertips. Equipped with Category 100 Hurricane technology, personalized wind power, adjustable at will, you can tailor your cooling experience to perfection. Whether you crave a gentle breeze or a more vigorous wind, this fan caters to your personal comfort preferences. Pair this with the product's superior 15 hours of battery life and aluminium alloy aesthetics, you can get an effortless, long-lasting tactile sensation for the whole day. Don't let the heat ruin things for you when relief is just a click away. Click the link in the description and you will get a 20% off coupon for this fantastic product, instantly making you feel refreshed. Ah, what a delightful breeze. In order to learn about the full story of Ken Masters, we have to go all the way back to Street Fighter's roots to the release of the original game in the series. 36 years ago, this iconic gaming franchise was born, but the game that was simply titled Street Fighter was a very different game to all those that would later follow it. While Street Fighter games and fighting games in general are famed for their large selection of playable characters, this 1987 title was rudimentary compared to its later successors. In fact, speaking of characters, only two different fighters were playable. Both of these athletes had identical movesets and were intentionally the same so that they could be assigned to the arcade cabinets as first and second players. Ryu was assigned to the player 1 button layout and Ken received player 2. This pretty much would lay the foundations for Ken's existence in the Street Fighter universe. He was literally made to be the franchise's Luigi, with the fighter forever living in his sparring partner's shadow. While at this point there was not much to separate Ryu and Ken aside from their gi and hair colours, it is speculated that the blonde was based on real life karate world champion Joe Lewis. Lewis was an American who would train in a traditional style over in Japan then would return to the US and become a famous champion. Looking at his hairstyle and red apparel on the front of magazines and in promotional shots, it indicates that the connection between the two seems highly likely. The game's original planner, Hiroshi Matsumoto, would give him the name Ken, due to the fact that in Japanese the word meant fist, which meant that he would have a name often held by Americans, which also sounded cool in Japan simultaneously. Now, depending on whether you were playing as player 1 or player 2, Ken or Ryu would fight their way through the World Warrior Tournament. In Street Fighter 1, if a player was skilled enough, they would defeat the master of Muay Thai, Sagat, in the finals. As the franchise got bigger though, the titles would slowly begin to receive deeper and deeper lore. Street Fighter's canon would soon explicitly state that it was Ryu who would reach the final and face off against Sagat, with Ken becoming further embedded as just the star of the franchise's supportive sparring partner. Moving four years past the original game in the series, we would get the title everyone remembers, Street Fighter 2. It would see the red and white wearing duo return to action amongst a colourful cast of new playable fighters. The revolutionary game featured character designs from Akira Yasuda, who would help flesh out the Ken character further. Akira Yasuda, also known by the alias of Akiman, would take additional influence from American kickboxer, martial arts choreographer and actor, Benny Uquides, 
after he was penciled in the Square Jungle manga. While starting out initially as not that much different from palette swaps to one another, throughout the Street Fighter 2 era, both Ryu and Ken would be given more defined personalities. Ryu was depicted as the stoic, serious athlete, whereas Ken was a little happy-go-lucky. His wing quotes in Street Fighter 2 also revealed that he has a giant ego, with him often reminding opponents about his greatness. As brash and arrogant as he is though, it was clear through this era that his heart was in the right place. With his honour, hard work, endurance and discipline meaning that he would never back down from a fight. In fact, if you play as Ken and defeat M. Bison, it reveals more of his softer side, with him marrying his love interest Eliza. As mentioned, while Ken started as a Ryu clone, in later Street Fighter 2 editions, Ken's character was modified to focus on style and attack speed, along with a notable focus on more brutal judo throws, such as his trademark knee striking grapple. The two fighters' movesets would be further diversified from here as the series progressed. With the Street Fighter franchise being outrageously popular by 1994, we would of course get the infamous live action movie which would tell the Street Fighter story radically different from the games. Ken would be played by Damien Chapa, with him and Ryu trying to make money in the movie by setting up a deal selling toy guns to some terrorists, depicting the pairing as virtuous con men. Sadly in the movie, Ken would not even play second fiddle, as even Ryu was bumped down the card in favour of Guile. As the American Hollywood producers saw an American character who was part of the military as far more marketable apparently than a pair of karate bums, and as without even mentioning the G.I. Joe brand deal that Capcom had signed either. The film would see Ken in a rivalry with the movie's second tier villain Sagat, with him getting involved with the other fighters that take down Shadaloo at the end of the movie. This version of Ken would of course also be the one seen in the Street Fighter the movie games that were based off of this now cult favourite. In the Japanese Street Fighter 2 animated movie that was released that same year, Ken would play a much bigger and more prominent role. The non-canon to the game's movie is set directly after the events of Street Fighter 2 the video game and sees Ken settled down with Eliza, but in it he still yearns to defeat his friend, rival and sparring partner Ryu. In the movie he fights T-Hawk, which M. Bison witnesses through footage he has acquired. The cunning M. Bison realises that Ken and Ryu's rivalry can be exploited, so hunts down Ken and uses his desire to beat Ryu as a weakness to hypnotise him. Later in the movie, Bison sets to hypnotise Ken on Ryu, who initially refuses to fight back, but is soon given no choice. Fortunately, as the white gi wearing fighter prepares to retaliate against Ken, memories of their past wreak havoc on Ken's mind, and he manages to break free of Bison's mind control leading to the two friends teaming up and pummeling the dictator into submission. But this wouldn't be the last time a darker side of Ken would be depicted, which we shall soon get to. Ken would obviously also be a part of the American cartoon based on the live action movie, whereby he would re-emerge as a con man. In this one, Ken is shown to be greedy and adventurous, looking for all kinds of treasures within this G.I. Joe-like kid show. What may surprise you, as insignificant as this show may seem, merchandise that was linked to it would actually end up feeding into the main Street Fighter canon that is still significant to this day, with events transpiring that would lead to Ken gaining his last name Masters. The reason for Ken becoming Ken Masters was due to the fact that the Street Fighter action figures were produced by Hasbro. Hasbro were concerned that they could get in legal trouble with Mattel for producing their own Ken dolls, a name already held by Barbie's boyfriend. Giving him the surname Masters was enough to evade any potential litigious matters from unfolding. As for all the media that followed the success of Street Fighter 2 video games, television in Japan would receive Street Fighter 2 V, an animated show that acts as a prequel to the video game. In this one, Ken is a wealthy 17-year-old from a very rich family. Living in San Francisco in a large mansion, he still spends time training with Ryu, and the pair end up going on a training journey together after they have had their ass handed to them by Guile. Shenanigans unfold in this episodic series, with Ken even becoming smitten with Chun-Li to the point where he takes her on a shopping spree to buy her things. What a simp. Moving into 1995, we would finally get a new video game, and the birth of the Street Fighter Alpha series. 
mid crawls that story-wise occur in between the events of a 1987 game and Street Fighter 2. Alpha reveals that after Ryu's showdown with Sagat, Ken would go on to fight and win in a US martial arts tournament, which is where he would first meet his lover Liza, who he married at the end of Street Fighter 2. Now he has one thing on his mind, finally beating his sparring partner Ryu in combat. Ken would make the effort to fly back to Japan so that he could fight his friend. In Alpha 2, Ken finds himself victorious, but realises the victory is fairly hollow as Ryu is not his usual self. It seems Ryu is pondering what makes a true fighter, the fist he used to beat Sagat or the one Akumi uses to murder people. Ken realises Ryu has been deeply troubled since his last victory over Sagat. He reminds him to keep fighting in order to find the answers and gives him his red headband and tells him that whenever he feels lost, he should use it as a reminder of their fight and to keep fighting to find the answers he needs. Ryu happily takes the headband and they both go their separate ways. By Street Fighter Alpha 3, Ken begins to wonder about his own life. Ryu seemed to be on the right track again, but what of him? In this instalment, he encounters Karin, who tells him she has followed his career and is trying to best her rival Sakura to prove she is superior. Basically, the rivalry between Karin and Sakura depicts what if Ken and Ryu were girls. Ken advises her it's good to have a rival, not for supremacy, but to keep on training harder and focusing. Also in Alpha 3, Ken faces off against then Bison, with Bison easily defeating him. In this state of weakness, just like in the Street Fighter 2 animation, the dictator hypnotizes him and puts him under mind control. In this brainwashed state, Ken fights Ryu on M. Bison's behalf, but Ryu manages to win, snapping Ken from his control. After M. Bison is defeated in the game, Ken is happy to see his old friend again, with a promise of a new duel the two part ways. Canonically, this obviously leads up to the events of the Second World Warrior Tournament in Street Fighter 2, but if the Alpha games revealed to us anything, it would be how keen Ken is to prove he has surpassed Ryu and secondly that M. Bison managed to use this weakness to take control of him. There would also be Street Fighter Alpha The Animation and Street Fighter Alpha Generations, but both of these animated pieces would build strongly on Ryu's story rather than Ken's, which is not surprising considering he has always been the second fiddle man. Ken would also appear in the Street Fighter EX series of games, Pocket Fighter, the Marvel vs Capcom crossover games and the crossovers with SNK, but Ken's next canon appearance after the Alpha series of games started with his appearance in Street Fighter 3 New Generation, released in 1997. Until the announcement of Street Fighter 6, the Street Fighter 3 games marked the latest point in the Street Fighter timeline. The games see Ken moving into more of a mentor role, with him training a Brazilian teenage martial artist named Sean, who begged to become his student. By this point in his life, Ken also juggled this by maintaining a home and raising a child, with these circumstantial changes straining his relationship with Ryu. Still with a lot on his plate, Ken enters into the third World Warrior Tournament, with his in-game ending revealing that he has begun to train his son Mel in martial arts. He sends Sean to go find Ryu and challenge him like he did years before. Ken also learns more about the mysterious secret society and wants to gain even more info on them, which sees him face off against Orion. He also learned that Ryu had sought him out and travelled far for their long-awaited rematch. Tossing some friendly jabs at each other, the two fight, but with ultimately Ryu picking up the victory against his long-time friend. It would be a while after the Street Fighter 3 games that we would get more canon Street Fighter material, which would arrive with Street Fighter 4 in 2008. Set between the events of Street Fighter 2 and 3, in Street Fighter 4, new villain Seth sets up the Sin tournament. With regards to this tournament, Ken is not sure whether or not he wants to compete, as Eliza is currently pregnant with their future child, Mel. Since in his inner conflict, Eliza assures him that she'll be fine and that the baby isn't due for a while yet, so he should go meet up with Ryu and enter the tournament. Over the course of the tournament, he encounters his self-appointed rival Rufus, but the biggest plot reveal of all for Ken is discovering that his old master Goken was still alive and had survived his bout of Akuma all those years ago. Ken is upset that his master did not say anything to him, but Goken simply counters that Ken no longer needs a master. Eventually, Ken makes it back home to Eliza, but notes that he and Ryu's fight was meaningless, as neither man could give their all as they were both so distracted with all of the other strange events unfolding. 
Kane in Street Fighter 4 story concludes with the birth of his son Mel, who, as we mentioned earlier, begins training during Street Fighter 3. Next up, we of course have Street Fighter 5, with Ken being first announced for the game on July the 9th, 2015. This game would change Ken's look more than ever before, giving him both a new outfit and hairstyle, as well as altering many of his moves. This distanced him more from Ryu than ever as well. Occurring between the events of Street Fighter 4 and 3, Ken is still reflecting on his previous bouts with Ryu, and ends up visiting him. The two spar, but the fight is interrupted, leading to later events in the game, with the pair joining up with other fighters to take out M. Bison's Shadaloo for good. M. Bison is eventually defeated at the hands of Ryu, but after the villains have been vanquished, the training partners and rivals face off one more time. Ryu manages to defeat Ken, but drops his red headband, but Ken hands it back to him, figuring he might still need it. The two are later seen sharing a friendly fist bump, bringing all their canonical appearances to a close. Until the release of Street Fighter 6 anyway. But before we get to that, there is a whole nother side of Ken which we must delve into. So, Ken's last moments in both Street Fighter 5 and later down the timeline in Street Fighter 3 both end the same, with the fighter losing to Ryu. But, as previously illustrated in the Alpha games and supplementary materials such as the Street Fighter 2 movie, Ken is not as secure about being second place to Ryu as his confident exterior often exudes. Throughout video game history, Ken has had an alternative form that is bred from his jealousy of Ryu, that he has transformed into multiple times away from the main Street Fighter story. This form, known as Violent Ken, was conceived off the back of Ken being brainwashed by M. Bison, back in the Street Fighter 2 animated movie. In this state, he has no empathy for others and cares about no one, craving nothing but more power and violence. Speaking of this narrative, you could argue that the existence of this version of Ken goes even further back than the animated movie, with the concept's roots being planted in the Street Fighter 2 two-part manga. In this illustrated piece, Ken goes missing after he and his friend Ryu confront Bison at their own master's dojo. Ken reappears further in the story, having been brainwashed by Bison's drug doll, resulting in him getting into a violent conflict with Ryu. Emotionally conflicted throughout the bout, Ken manages to snap out of it, but it gave readers a taste of some of what was to come with the character's alternative future. This concept that appeared in movies and manga for many years was never actually included in any of the Street Fighter video games. However, when this story would be first drawn upon in video game form, it would not be Capcom who would pull the trigger but instead SNK in their SVC Chaos title that saw release in 2003. In this video game, Ken has once again been brainwashed, being completely controlled by Shadaloo through the use of Psycho Power, the same energy that flows through M. Bison that he utilises in combat. While obvious similarities can be drawn between Evil Ryu and Violent Ken, their alternative powers are from very different sources. Violent Ken utilises Psycho Power and Evil Ryu uses the Satsui no Hado, the same surge of murderous intent that is wielded by Akuma. As for the reasoning in SVC Chaos as to why Ken can be manipulated and controlled in such a way, it all falls down to a weakness within the fighter's personality and ego. Basically, Ken often feels pangs of jealousy due to being outclassed and surpassed by his friend and rival Ryu, creating an opening for the brainwashing to take place. Once full of hatred and jealousy, this psycho power enhanced version of Ken becomes determined to prove he is stronger than Ryu, once and for all, even resulting in him being able to throw purple Hadoukens in this state. In this game's isolated plot, seeing the red headband he gave Ryu helps him snap back out of the brainwashing, helping him to return to his normal self. If in the title a match is set between regular Ken and violent Ken, Ken in his regular form wonders if deep down he desires to become his darker form. Completing the game as either version of Ken results in similar endings after defeating the game's final opponent. The only difference being that if playing as violent Ken, it shows that the evil power consuming him lost its hold, with both endings depicting him returning home with his love, Eliza. After the release of SVC Chaos, a series of manga would be published in 8 volumes celebrating the game. In this adaptation, Violent Ken emerges differently, instead being convinced by Red Arima, who is originally from the Ghosts and Goblins series, that he needs to join him. Afterwards, he is forced to undergo an operation on his brain, turning him into his violent form. Like in many other stories though, it is Ryu that helps him return to the light. 
he would show up again in Street Fighter 2 Turbo Udon comic series, once again being brainwashed by Shadaloo's group. But in the world of video games, his next appearance would not be until 2015. But in this instance, it was not a fighting game appearance at all. The game I'm referring to is Project X Zone 2, a crossover tactical role playing game for the Nintendo 3DS that was developed by Monolith Soft. This title crosses over characters from a cornucopia of universes, including Bandai Namco, Capcom, Sega, and even Nintendo. In this game, he is depicted with purple flames and glowing red eyes, where he serves as an opponent. Once again, as usual, it is Ryu who brings Ken to his senses. The following year would see the character used within Udon's comics once more, this time within Street Fighter vs Darkstalkers. In this instance, Ken's feeble and easy to manipulate mind is taken advantage of by Lord Raptor, who manages to transform him into his violent form. In this story though, at least the plot is mixed up somewhat, as neither Dan, Sakura or even Ryu are able to help change Ken back to normal, and later he gets into a fight with Rufus and nearly kills the man. In this comic book, it is Ken's loving wife Eliza who helped restore him to his senses. Still, after years and years, first being created as a concept in the early 90s, Violent Ken had still never actually ever been in a Street Fighter game, which is crazy to think really considering how long he had been floating about across so many different media sources. This would finally change with the release of Ultra Street Fighter 2 for Final Challenges, a game that up until this day is the newest iteration of a classic game. His existence in the game's story is very similar to most other sources with M. Bison taking control of the man using Psycho Power. Violent Ken is more aggressive, fearless and cutthroat than he is in his regular form. He can move around a playfield at a quicker pace as well and glides towards the ground after jumping in almost slow motion. In addition to Ken's regular moves, he now has new maneuvers at his disposal, such as a special dash like teleporting technique that allows him to make a mockery of opponents. He does have some new weaknesses though, for example that when fighting in this more violent and erratic form, he uses up energy more quickly and his lack of coherence puts him in further danger of burning out during fierce combat. In Ultra Street Fighter 2, if playing as the character, once he has destroyed all of his opponents, obviously a final encounter with them Bison himself lays in wait. Once Ken easily disposes of the despotic dictator in the game's ending, Ken regains control of his senses and leaves on a boat. On board, he admits to himself that he will never go on the same path as Ryu, but hopes to see him at the end of it all, bringing violent Ken's Capcom appearances to an end for now. In 2018, Ken would join the Super Smash Bros. roster, when the title Super Smash Bros. Ultimate saw release. As for violent Ken, Ken does have an alternate costume that looks much like his appearance back in SVC Chaos. Speaking of this costume, it is used in both the Mewtwo and Dark Samus classic mode routes, where corrupted or brainwashed forms of various characters from the game must be fought. Ken in his SVC attire obviously is used in these instances. So where does this leave us today with the most recent Street Fighter game in the series, Street Fighter 6? Well, Street Fighter 6 is actually set right at the end of the timeline, past the point of even Street Fighter 3. So everything that goes down with Ken in the game showcases the latest chapter in this fighter story, and a dark tale it is for him. In the weeks leading up to the game's release, a promotional comic book series would be launched with these comics placing what happens with Ken Masters as one of its most important plot points. Chapter 1, known as Days of Eclipse, sees others from the Masters Foundation concerned with how Ken is splashing his family fortune. In fact, he has spent an astronomical $1.5 billion trying to build up a small, isolated nation known as Neishal, and this is without consulting his father. Ken has been doing some pretty shaky business moves through this endeavour, including getting involved in cryptocurrencies, insurance schemes, and building communication infrastructure. But feels all of this is imperative to ensure Neishal doesn't get swallowed up by surrounding countries. The board of directors at the Masters Foundation are perplexed by Ken's decision making, particularly by the fact that Neishal is holding a fighting tournament at an ancient arena as one of its support projects. The comic also reintroduces us to Mel Masters, who is having a rocky relationship with his father as he doesn't feel Ken cares about his needs. Luke, who initially debuted as a military lad in Street Fighter V, now works for a PMC and functions as Mel Masters escort. When visiting the arena, Ken meets JP, who is working with Ken to integrate Neishal's ancient traditions with modern technology. It is also revealed that Neishal has a king named Shari, who invites Ken to compete in the tournament, but he insists he no longer fights, but the king wants him in anyway. 
Kane leaves in a car with a Masters Foundation board member Jackson on board and the driver Marvin, with them attempting to drive a route avoiding people who are protesting government policies. They end up encountering the protesters and among them are people wearing cloaks and masks. They shoot at the car, causing it to explode, with no one escaping except for Ken. A woman and a man named Tuchimoto picks up Ken, who's unconscious, and the two drive off with the injured fighter. In Chapter 2, Ken awakes in Tuchimoto's apartment. Recovering from a gunshot wound, Chun Li shows up and tells Ken about those he was travelling with's deaths, but informs him that Interpol are taking him into custody due to a video being transmitted that frames him as a terrorist. Ken is obviously fuming with this, but Chun Li assures him they are looking to find a way to prove his innocence. But it would not be safe for him to remain amongst the public at the moment as they believe him to be a criminal. While Chun Li is out of the room making a call, Ken asks Tachimoto to clean his gunshot wound, but he instead knocks him out and escapes. In Chapter 3, as a fugitive on the run, at some point in the comic, Luke spots him and decides he wants to take him in. Run into an abandoned building, Ken stumbles into JP, who explains he found Ken through his surveillance network with him ominously telling Ken his story was always supposed to end here. JP tells Ken that people crave a salacious story of a highly renowned champion being in league with terrorists and line his own pockets. At this point, Ken realises that JP made a deepfake video to frame him. Ken tries to fight JP, but JP dodges his moves and trips him over with his cane. He then uses his drone to reveal he has Mel captive. This causes Ken to threaten to kill JP. Johan explains that the true cause of terrorism is the fact that one is willing to kill, as long as it satisfies their own fiction. And if Ken pushes the button, he will save Mel, but instead another drone will explode elsewhere and could kill others. Ken assumes this is a bluff, but JP assures him he doesn't bluff. Ken then begs the villain to stop, but instead he just uses the cane to reduce the time. With a stroke of luck, Ken uses the device to save Mel, but Luke sees him using it, further enforcing his belief that Ken is a terrorist. Luke demands that Ken surrenders, but a woman grabs Ken and the two leap through a window with them landing in a river, bringing the third chapter to a close. Chapter 4 reveals that the woman who saved Ken was Kalima, someone who appeared earlier in the comic working with JP. Ken questions whether this is another setup, but she explains she is part of the opposition. She states many of her comrades have been framed and persecuted just like Ken, and all of this is simply because they want Naishal to remain a sovereign state. She reveals that the fighting tournament that Ken helped JP fund was being used to launder money, and that JP plans to move the funds via an online betting system to steal the lot, then blame Ken for its disappearance. Ken then heads to the arena to confront JP and Luke and relocate his son, Mel. Once there, Luke advises Ken to turn himself in while JP continues to mock him, claiming he will take good care of his son. In a fit of rage, Ken attacks Luke and injures his eye, causing the scar you see on his face in the main game. Luke is disgusted that a former champion has teamed with terrorists and states he will show no mercy to monsters. Luke then reveals to Ken that his own father was killed in a terrorist attack and he should never have breached Mel's trust like that. Luke tells Ken if he gives up, he can see Mel again, but Ken won't give up, commenting that Mel needs to see his father fight to the end. The two fight with Ken being victorious. Only then does he surrender to be arrested. Days later, we see Mel staring out of a window in his father's office. Elsewhere, Ken now released is walking down the street, more tired and depressed than ever, but his fighting spirit remains unbroken finally bringing us to the Street Fighter 6 game itself. Playing arcade mode as Ken Masters reveals Ken's name was cleared, but due to the horrific ordeal that he went through, he can no longer live his old life. Forced into hiding, Ken gets a new job at a construction company in Metro City, with his reasoning for fighting being flipped on its head. And through all of this, he doesn't even know whether he should kill JP. The depressing circumstances that Ken finds himself in is the reason as to why he looks so dishevelled in this game and why so many people prior to this title's release accused Ken of being homeless. Thus far, this is the darkest period in this beloved character's life, but hey, at least they gave him a story and a ton of depth, making him far more interesting than a simple palette swap of Ryu anymore, like he was in his earliest days. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that was the rise and fall of Ken Masters, the fighter who has lost it all. 
If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Then check out some of my other Street Fighter character retrospectives. See you soon. Cheerio.